Good afternoon and welcome to today's rather sobering talk on trash and the impact on wildlife. I am to give you a few examples of why our trash is so problematic. So have any of you heard of Midway at all? Or do you know what is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? And why would we care here? So this picture shown here is a Laysan albatross pictured on Midway Atoll, which is a small atoll in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It is not inhabited and humans are at least a thousand and more miles away from this island. Yet on this island are found dozens and dozens or hundreds of bird skeletons. And what you can see inside this bird is its cause of death. It is literally full of trash because these birds mix up fish with the floating trash debris in the ocean and they feed on it. And ultimately they die of it. So why do we care here? Because this impacts us as well. The global trash unfortunately does not go away, uh, but it ends up in places like Belize as well. So what is trash? Um, it's improperly disposed waste products. And there is a lot of different waste products that we produce. Uh, and it impacts, first of all, of course, the environment in which it accumulates, as well as animals in many which ways, and plants, and last but not least, us, humans. And plastic indeed is a major problem. The beauty of plastic is it's long lasting uh, and cheap, but the problem is it doesn't degrade and therefore it accumulates. And in addition to that, in the ocean on plastic, pollutants will actually concentrate. So a sobering number since 1950, about 8.3 million tons of plastic were produced. And of those less than 10% were recycled. The rest of that is in our environment. So what happens is that animals like these albatross and others may eat it and suffer the consequences including very slow and painful death. And eventually these larger plastic pieces that you saw in those pictures will be ground down to microplastics, which will then lead to them being consumed by plankton and accumulating through the food chain until it ultimately lands on our plate as contaminated seafood. So here, another image from the Wildlife Federation here talking about the plague of plastics. Uh, this is another one of these birds and you can see where its stomach was is just an overwhelming amount of plastic which led to them not getting any proper nutrition. So another sobering um, comparison here at this time, the ratio of plastic to fish in our oceans is about one to five. So we still have five fish to one piece of plastic. Yet for 2050, which is not that far away, it is estimated that the ratio of plastics to fish in the ocean could be one to one, and that is by weight. So as much trash in the ocean as fish. Can you imagine that? Unfortunately, it's happening. So now to some examples of patients that we have seen at the wildlife clinic. One of the early ones was an opossum that was just trapped in an open trash can. That was a simple solution uh, with rescue and release. And there is a simple prevention for this by keeping lids on trash cans. Um, this doesn't just help opossums, but it also prevents a lot of wildlife conflict. Next, we had a songbird which accidentally dropped into an open tray of motor oil. Unfortunately, this bird uh, succumbed really quickly uh, because burnt motor oil is very highly toxic. So the solution to this is to not leave motor oil containers open and to always ensure proper disposal of those. And please, 
note that this is also very important to human health uh, to be disposed of to where it does not lead to contamination of groundwater. So a few more examples here with a picture from San Pedro Sun. This is on ambergris or in the lagoon. There is many images of crocodiles eating garbage. And we have seen multiple crocodiles with garbage in them, with hooks in them, as well as turtles with hooks in them. We also had a peacock who ate a needle which punctured its stomach and a cormorant who had a hook in his neck or a croc that was wrapped in fishing line. And the outcome, unfortunately, in many of these cases was fatal for the animal. And the solution can be somewhat simple, properly disposing of garbage to where wildlife doesn't have access to it. Fishing line and nets causing entanglement is a huge issue. And you may have heard of this impacting marine life um, much more so even than terrestrial. So all animals are affected, uh, but our oceans are very much at threat because even if our garbage starts terrestrially, ultimately it goes with our waterways into the ocean. So there are more problems than uh, animals being killed by eating uh, garbage or being obstructed by large pieces of garbage or punctured by garbage, but the mere fact that uh, trash will attract wildlife and therefore lead the all too common human wildlife conflict. This brings us about 20% of our intakes at the wildlife clinic, human wildlife conflict. And this is many, many times caused by garbage uh, causing an attraction. So if garbage is properly managed, this will reduce the rat populations, which will in turn also decrease the amount of conflict with barn owls or snakes in your backyard, because these guys are attracted because there are rodents which are attracted by garbage. So sometimes it's a two to three step process going back to the problem of garbage. So disposing and furthermore, disposing food items accessible to crocs or jaguars can lead to them losing their fear of humans, which can cause a deadly threat for uh, humans by these predators. The image here is one of our first hooked crocodiles uh, named Captain Hook. Unfortunately, he had a hook in his chest around the base of his heart and he ultimately succumbed due to it as well. And are you familiar with this link? Garbage along the highways leads to animals getting into the highways and roads. And this leads to them getting hit by cars. So 30% of our clinic intakes are found on the roadside. Very often they're attracted to the road by the amounts of trash and garbage along side. And most times these animals will die due to the severity of their inju injuries. Sometimes this also causes serious injury to or damage to vehicles. And in the worst case, this will cause a car accident. So the solution is don't throw garbage onto the roads, slow down when you see animals or eye shine. And of course, assist with cleanup campaigns and educate others about this issue because this is not very commonly known. So here is a poster by the Wildlife Center of Virginia from the US, one of our partners and mentors that emphasizes just this. I was raised with uh, being told that we could throw out compost and organic debris along the roadside, but that was wrong because that is what attracts a lot of animals onto the road and they may not know how to respond to cars and get killed and cause accidents. And ultimately in the end, why we really want to address this as humans is because it comes back to us. Yes, that trash kills lots of animals due to malnutrition, toxicity, obstruction, entanglement, and more. And it attracts the animals, which gives us human wildlife conflict, which of course causes problems for our safety. And last but not least, these microplastics that I mentioned early on, 
which will accumulate through the food chain being ingested first by plankton, then by the next fish, all the way up to the top predator, which is us, and land on our plate as polluted seafood. Uh, there are high levels of mercury, for example, found in some of these seabirds due to this plastic. And we can assume that the same will happen to our seafood as well. So another very sobering image here and statement, uh, if we don't change by 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the world's oceans. But good news, Belize is a trendsetter. Belize is literally one of the first countries to ban single use plastics. This is definitely a big part of the solution, but there's much else that we as individuals can do to make a difference in this issue. So this is just a very short list, of course. Number one is to reduce the use of plastics. So using cloth bags, reusable bottles, not using straws, for example. Disposing of trash properly, closing trash cans, not leaving trash in the environment or your backyard, but following this leave only footsteps and take only pictures model. Recycling, taking the trash to the distribution center, choosing products that reduce trash and participating or organizing in cleanup campaigns, as well as learning more about these risks of inappropriate garbage management and educating others are just a few things that you can do. And we're curious to know uh, what you can think of because there is so much more that we can do to minimize this garbage problem. Please send us an email and let us know what suggestions you may have to add to this. And then we have a bit of further recommended viewing. There is a um, documentary by the title of A Plastic Ocean. We'll share the link in the comments. And then there is the Plastic Pollution Coalition that you could also check out. Um, and as always, contact us with questions. And last but not least, if you see any wildlife in trouble, be it entangled in your garbage or in any other trouble, call our hotline at 615 5159. You can also use WhatsApp and we stand by to assist you with advice and if necessary, uh, with rescue. Thank you so much for your attention.